hello my beautiful youtube family welcome back to my channel hey cousins if you're new here i'm the tarita interests by tarita and i make videos all about my journey of starting a candle business so today's video is going to be a pretty long video i am prepping for markets um making my fall candles um so that is what you will see me um, in the beginning of this video doing and towards the end, I will show some footage of the pop-up that I did most recently and go into detail about how I did in that market. So as you see right here, I'm just um, wicking my jars. I've already cleaned them out and putting the wick stabilizers on them. I did try to speed up um, some parts of this so that I don't bore you guys with all the small details uh, but you can get the gist that right here I am just placing these wick holders on top so that the wick can stay in place Right here I am getting ready to pour my beeswax into um, a pouring pitcher to weigh out my wax the wax blend that I use is a custom wax blend that I created myself um, I use four five uh, GW 454 wax as my primary wax and I mix in a certain percentage of beeswax into the candle I don't add the beeswax for um, a better hot throw or anything like that I add the beeswax to create a higher melt point and to not get that rough top after the candle is burning right here I'm just measuring out my primary wax which like I just said is GW454 in slow motion this is so beautiful to watch I love watching slow motion liquids fall into a container it does something for me are you guys enjoying this slow motion wax pouring into this picture so much asmr going on right here um sensory so i'm just going to be quiet and just allow you guys to watch this wax pour into the picture So right here in this next clip, I am getting ready to marble my candles. So there are many techniques to marble candles, but I found that marbling my candles in this way speeds up the process a little bit faster than um, when I first started making candles, how I marbled was a lot different. If you watch some of my previous videos, or um, I think I only have one video where I marbled it differently, but I, I soon found out uh, really quickly that if I was ever gonna be making a bunch of candles at a time, then marbling them the way that I used to marble them would be extremely time consuming um, if I ever got to the point where I'm making a lot of candles. So I wanted to make my process smoother and faster. So this is why I ended up choosing this method. Um, I can't remember who I saw marble candles in this way. 
Um, if I think of that later, I will let you guys know so you can shoot over to their videos to watch them marble as well. So right here, I am pretty much just marbling a different fragrance. The blue candles that you saw are my Autumn Nights candle, which is the Flaming Candle Sweater Weather. Um, the current one, the black marble candle that I'm currently making is Man Cave, which is the Flaming Candles um, Mahogany Teakwood. So the candles are at the correct pouring temperature for me. For me, I pour my candles after they have dried, um, the marbling part has dried mostly, and I pour the rest of the candle at about 140, between 140 and 150 degrees, more so at 140, because at this temperature, I found that if I do it hotter than 150, all of the marbling that I did, those sides will melt down and it will just all blend in and muddle into the candle. And so the marbling effect will be gone. So I pour it about 140 to prevent that from happening. So now I am just making a few room slash linen sprays um, and a few, I believe two or three different fragrances um, that I ran out of. I only make these a few at a time um, because I don't like, I like it to be made to order to a certain degree and I don't like certain fragrances such as my Trophy Wife um, linen spray. It has vanillin in it and it changes color. It gets like brown. brown. That's the only fragrance that I have that kind of turns a little bit brown. Um, so I like to pour, um, make these linen sprays um, not too um, much prior to the event. Um, so I'm just pouring a few here. Instead of making a small picture of one fragrance when I have multiple, I like to do it individually only because I like to be able to shake it up um, to make sure it's incorporated well. Um, I found that when I tried to make a, like a small little picture of a, one fragrance, when I stir it, I mean it does mix together, but I feel like I get a better mix when I shake up the individual bottles to um, make sure it's all mixed. Right here, I am prepping my jars to make a couple more candles in my Fallen Leaves fragrance. I don't necessarily care for this fragrance too much, but I know a, a lot of people do like this fragrance, so I don't make too many of these candles at a time. I try to see what sells first before I make a lot more. Um, this is my first year in business during the fall and winter months, so, I'm learning as I go which fragrances people like or lean more towards during the fall season. Um, I heard Fallen Leaves is a very popular fragrance, so that is why I 
included it in my fall collection. Um, it is a strong thrower in candle in my candle wax, so um, I went forward with it. Same process, just a different candle. I'm marbling um, as I showed you before with a different color and a different fragrance. So that's what I'm doing right here. So right here, my candles have dried and I am taking the wick holders off and I'm going to cut my wicks down to about a quarter of an inch or as close to a quarter of an inch as possible. Might be a little bit over, might be a little bit under for a few, but um, you get the gist. So since these jars are only about three inches tall, I like to save the other half of my wicks to reuse them. I do have wick tabs. And so if I'm ever low on wicks, I can make my own wick um, using these leftover wick trimmings. So now I am smoothing off my tops with the heat gun uh, with this wax blend. I don't get sinkholes, but I do get um, somewhat of a dip right where um the, like in the center but no sinkholes so i'm just fixing the tops as you can see look at that beautiful marbling I, I just love it every candle is unique um this is them dried over or drying over how the tops look i like how the, when it melts over the top sometimes the color marbles the candle at the top depending on you know how it is um, but now I'm just going to label these candles here. So more labeling, I'm just trying to see which side of the jar I want to put the label on. I typically try to line my labels up horizontally to the wicks. So if I have two wicks horizontal, I like for 
my label to be horizontal with the wicks if that makes sense i'm not sure if i'm making sense i don't like for my wicks to be parallel and the label to be horizontal across um i'm not sure if i'm making sense but um so that's what i'm doing here so this is just a shot of all of the candles together front and back so that you can see the different unique marbling on all of the candles that i've made uh today So for the fall pumpkin candles that I got from Candle Science, I created this label I just wanted to show you guys. It's a hang tag. Um, on the back is the warning sticker. And um, I just put my logo on the front. I use cardstock and I print, I use Canva to create this hang tag. Um, and so it'll hang like on the lid, just like that. <clears throat> I know my mouth is moving, but I had to silence the video because there was music playing at this pop-up and I don't want to get a copyright uh, hit on my channel. Um, so I'm just showing you, that's my sister. I'm just showing you my booth set up. And um, like I said, I forgot my wax melts, but that's okay. I'm gonna do a walkthrough of the pop-up event so that you can get an idea of um, it was probably about i want to say maybe 30 to 40 vendors um this was a vintage and handmade market i've never done a vintage market before um so it was definitely different i saw a lot of um like older like old clothing or vinyl records um, things like that at this pop-up. Um, that was the first that I've seen um, that type of um, thing at a pop-up, um, but it was pretty cool. Um, I, I was the only container candle um, maker here. Um, there wasn't one other candle maker, but she made uh, votive candles. So we were drastically different as far as the type of product we both had. So as you saw, there were a lot of clothing vendors here and a lot of vinyl record vendors and quite a few jewelry vendors as well. And I am back at my station. Hello, my beautiful YouTube family. Welcome back to my channel. Hey cousins, if you're new here, I'm the Tarita and Tristan's by Tarita and I make videos all about my journey of starting a candle business. So today was a very productive day today, you guys. I had a pop-up today and it was my best pop-up to date. So um, this is after the pop-up pop um, later on in the evening. And I just wanted to do a breakdown of how, uh, my sales and how I did. Um, so let's just get right into it. So this pop-up costed me, um, this was a GVG event. Um, down by close to um, where the old Brave Stadium Stadium was. Um, I believe it's Georgia State um, Stadium now in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, so there was a pop-up in that area. The event cost $101 and some change. Um, my total sales for today. I'm so excited, you guys. Um, my total sales was $470.11. So that is a total of 22 orders. My top product today um, that sold wasn't my eight ounce trophy wife candle. It kind of smells like, um, it's the flaming candles, cashmere, Oh, cocoa butter cashmere that's what that scent is and I call it trophy wife my next best selling candle was man cave which is the flaming candles mahogany teak wood and then the next candle uh, was the man cave in the large today I sold quite a few large candles which I was so surprised at I sold several cereal and milk candles today and I'm on my um, 
Shopify currently to try to, you know, break this down for you all. I also sold quite a few. It says my top selling products today. Um, so those were the candles that I just met, mentioned were the top selling candles. Um, but I sold quite, I sold quite a few um, room slash linen sprays. Uh, car perfumes was second uh, with, as far as top selling products. Car diffusers sold quite a, a lot. And like I said, Trophy Wife. I sold five Trophy Wife candles today. Three cereal and milk candles today. Um, I'm looking to see if... Oh, okay. So Shopify breaks it down even more for me. I sold a total of eight room sprays. Six car perfumes. Five Trophy Wife candles. I sold five car diffusers, three man cave candles, three cereal and milk candles, two autumn nights candles, one snickerdoodle, pumpkin snickerdoodle candle, one paradise island candle, one um, lav amber bliss candle as well so like i said i sold quite a few items today and i'm so proud i'm so excited um i did have one um hiccup when i first got to the pop-up i left all of my wax melts at home you all so i didn't sell any wax melts today and usually wax melts don't sell um as well for me um, anyway so I don't think it made a difference in my sales for today although I did leave them at home unfortunately um, I do have a checklist that I use typically but I was this weekend has just been crazy busy and yesterday I had a birthday party for my nephew we had a game night so I was helping my sister prep for that so I just, you know, it just slipped through the cracks, unfortunately, but um, I still did well, so kudos to me. And that is it. Um, I tried to get a lot of footage earlier today. As much as I could, they had music playing, so I couldn't just record really while I'm there. Uh, until next time, I hope you enjoy. Please, please don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out a lot and keeps me motivated to continue to post videos like this. It doesn't it doesn't cost anything. Like and subscribe to my channel, please. Until next time, bye.